some point in the next minute, you should see a little button that says live. Yes. Perfect. And everything's just loading on my screen on this end. And we are good to go. Okay, we're all set and ready. Hi, guys. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Hello to everybody who's joining us tonight. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of The Command Post. Um, we are um, joined today by Emily Rafter, Ryan Perrant, Matt Clancy, and Caitlin Rosima Seaton. And today we're going to be talking about what life is like when you're growing up as a military child, going through that military family journey. And we have some awesome guests with us today because we've procured sort of a diverse audience in the respect that we have Kate, we have Caitlin and Emily who are 16 and 15 respectively. So they're in it right now and they're going to give us that perspective. And we have Matt and Ryan who are, I want to say grown men, but relative to my age, they're still like little children and making me feel like an old fogey, but generally grown men who have, who now can kind of look back on their experience of what it was like to uh, grow up as part of a military family. So thanks guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Oh, of course. Awesome. So let's start with, I always have this really interesting question for, for kids who have grown up in the military. Um, where I want to know where you guys think you're from, for those of you who have moved around a lot, because I feel like I always get these different answers. So um, Emily, let's start with you. I don't know if you have um, have moved around a lot. First of, all, let's, first of all, let's start with what does your military family look like? Describe your family to me. So my dad is still in the military. He's still in the Air Force. My mom retired when she was a captain um, after like when she was touring in Egypt. So she's retired now and she now runs CP Business Solutions. So that in itself is super busy. That was, I really like that. Um, Kathy, shout out to CP Solutions. Your, your, your daughter just gave you an awesome photo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like I'm in her office right now. So it's really busy with, even with just a small business, it's busy. And then my older brother, Matthew, he has a small business that he's been running. And then my dad, before he got his like new change of a job, like every two years, like the one right now, um, the one right before this, he was traveling like twice a month. So it was super busy. And before that, Matthew and I, and my dad, we did, um, competitive martial arts for like 10 years. So I know I saw all the, the uh, uh, awards in your room the other day, lady. I wouldn't want to piss you off. So it's, I don't know how we ever did it because now that quarantine, like we're in quarantine, we don't know what to do with our time. And we really realized how crazy our schedules were. So it is very busy even now. So what is your, what's your dad up to now? I don't know. I love that. Okay. okay. That's no problem. <laughs> he comes home and he'll come say hi and he's always exhausted. And I feel so bad for him because they changed um, where he works now from downtown to like way out in the West End. So he's got to drive there, but he works from home most of the time now. Okay. So, and he's always on calls and he doesn't like meetings because it's like, it's all day. So he's all, he's very busy, but we don't really get a sense of what he's doing because it's okay. like classified. But he, was, so. but he was traveling a whole bunch before. Have you um, been able to kind of grow up in one spot or did you do a lot of moving around in your year? No. So I was born um, in Mons, Belgium. Okay. So and I you were born not, in Belgium. I am Actually, not from this continent. <laughs> I know that story because your mom talked about giving birth. That was you. You're like the famous Belgian baby. I heard yes, all about I that. Yes, I am the Belgian story. baby that she yeah. talked about. Yeah. So we were. So I was born in Belgium, where we lived for about I want to say about a year and a half. So we've traveled a lot throughout Europe. So I've been to most uh, most of the countries in Europe. Not that I remember any of it. But I started remembering things when we moved to Toronto, which was right after. And from Toronto, we moved to Cold Lake, Alberta. And then we moved to Montgomery, Alabama. And then we've moved up here where we've lived for about 11 years. Okay. So we haven't moved since then. Okay, so if I was to ask you, so where are you from, Em? So where are you from? What do you say? <sighs> See, I always have a problem with that question or like have trouble answering it because I was born in Belgium but that doesn't make me Belgian. Like I'm Canadian. Both of my parents are Canadian. I have a Canadian citizenship, but I was born in Belgium. So I've never, I've had like a bit of an identity crisis with trying okay. to put a title on that. So CP Solutions is going to be paying for some therapy down the road. <laughs> Not so huge problem. problems. Just right. like, I don't know what to call myself. Okay. So we'll try to come to get to the crux of this at some point and figure out where your identity, you know, where you should be identifying with. Caitlin, 
tell us about what your military family looks like. So my dad, um, he's in the Air Force, so he's an air navigator. And I don't exactly know what he's been doing. That's okay. Uh, he's the CEO of um, 426 at 8-Wing Trenton. Um, my mom runs her own company, um, Rifbo Digital Marketing. So, And then my two siblings, Owen and Madison, they are, Owen is 12 and Maddie's 11. Okay. I think, no, Owen's 13, Maddie's 11. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I have two dogs, Tucker and Charlie, and yeah, we've been moving around <laughs> a lot. And, and you've just turned 16 and got your license, so happy birthday, like, what, three days ago? Yes. Something like that, yeah. So have, <laughs> have you, so I know you're in Trenton right now, or in Belleville yep. right now, um, have you done a lot of moving around uh, since you've been alive in your military family? So when I was born, we lived in Trenton, and then we moved to Belleville when I was around a year old, I think. And then we stayed there for like five years, and then we moved to Oklahoma. And then from Oklahoma, we moved to Ottawa and Stittsville, and then we moved to Toronto for 10 months, and then we moved here. And, now, and how long have you been in Trenton now? few years. Um, we've been in Belleville for about almost three years now. Almost three years. Okay. Um, Rye, tell us what yes. you, what your military family looks like, looks like, what, uh, give us a whole Yeah. Story. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, out of the house now, but uh, moved out when I was about 18, but uh, grew up with a dad in the military, uh, helicopter pilot. And then uh, he retired as the um, acting vice chief of defense staff uh, here in Ottawa. Um, and then from there though, it has been a lot of moves. I've moved, I think, 11 times um, with the family and then four more externally by myself. So I kind of caught that moving bug. Yeah. I'm sure some of you guys can relate. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so hopped around from born in New Brunswick, uh, lived there twice on two separate occasions, uh, lived in Winnipeg twice on two separate occasions, uh, Alabama, we have Colorado Springs, uh, Naples, Italy in there, um, Ottawa. BC there's a whole bunch of whole bunch of different spots in in my little history with that okay wait hang on I forgot to ask Caitlin Caitlin where are you from I think Belleville okay we're going we don't so we have one I don't know we're not really sure and one Belleville Rye where are you from uh everywhere everywhere <laughs> honestly a little bit of a little bit of everywhere I have a bit of a, a sprinkling of every spot I've been to uh, in me like I born New Brunswick but I don't really relate to New Brunswick so that's my best answer. Okay, I like it everywhere. And Matt, tell us what your military family looked like. Yeah, so my uh, my parents met together in uh, military college, and my mom got out to to raise me. My my dad's still serving. Uh, he's actually retiring this year. He's down in Colorado Springs at NORAD. Um, so uh, my my military background, uh, Ryan's moved a lot more than me. Actually, um, I, I was very lucky that my dad found about four years together in, in Kingston, Ontario, where I was able to do high school at one school, which is awesome. super for, for a lot of military families. And so I was really blessed and lucky to have that experience. And then after that, I, I uh, went to Carleton University, same as Ryan at 18. I was, I was pretty quick to, to get out the door and then and go live on my own and try new uh, adventures and experiences through that. Um, and so I, I think that the question that, that you're posing that like, where, where are you from is, is a phenomenal one because I get it all the time where are you from? Where are you from? And it's a hard sometimes answer for a lot of military families. Right. And yeah. so um, I usually say Ontario, um, but I always prefix it with saying I was in a military family. So I moved around a lot, but I spent a lot of time on Ontario. Um, so where else have you spent time at? So you were in so, Gage Town? So yeah. So uh, Gage Town, uh, Winnipeg, I was spent some time in Toronto for, for a year. Uh, I was born in Pembroke, uh, spent about three years. Like I obviously don't remember this when I was like two uh, in, in Quebec as well. So uh, a bunch of different places, but not, not 11 postings plus four like Ryan had. So. And like small world here, but I'm talking to Matt on the phone earlier today and I'm kind of giving him a rundown of who's going to be on the episode. And I say Ryan's name. He's like, wait a second. We yeah. were engaged to him together like 20 years ago. So it's so funny. Do you, I have a question. And I, I know you're all, we're, we're kind of doing this like military brat Air Force edition today. Um, mm -hmm. Does it feel like a small community? Does it feel kind of like six degrees of separation or, or is it? Well, I was even yeah go like, ahead Matt the, the, the thing is is that like 
if you were to ask me any other military family, I wouldn't have known. Like, like the, the, the Perons were like the one that I, I, I do know. And like, we're open, we have each yeah. other on social media and stuff. And that like our parents, our, our fathers had served together. I believe your dad was the squadron commander, commander in New Brunswick at the time. Uh, uh, 403, yeah. Yeah, 403, yeah. And so like, the funny thing is that like, uh, Ryan has a brother that's also named Matthew. That's my age. And I have a brother named Ryan. That's a, a year. I have old. a brother named Matthew. Yeah, he's a yeah, common name apparently. I think a year. Something wasn't the water yeah. in the military here. Yeah, yeah. And, well, I remember and you will like... all be named Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it does relate to that. I mean, the small world fact is definitely in play. I mean, I've shared birthdays when I was a kid with uh, with Matthew's brother. So I mean, like it, it's definitely a tight knit community when you find yourself in those like same kind of situations or spots. What about you, Caitlin? Um, do you feel that it's like it's a tight knit, close community? Do you feel like you kind of all sort of know each other, or do you kind of feel kind of isolated? I've never really I felt isolated. Different. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Caitlin. Sorry, there's a delay on Caitlin's uh, <laughs> on Caitlin's internet here. Kate, you go. Caitlin, you go first, and then we'll go to Emma. Okay. Um, no, I feel like it's pretty it's different in every area. So bubbles, I think, is more. I know more military people than I would in Toronto. Right, that makes sense. What about you, Em? So because like we've grown up with it so much, it was the first like job that I ever really understood. So I've never really felt like it was, um, like it was distant from everything because we have so many friends that my dad went to military college with that we're friends with now right and it really is a small world like my dad was ryan's dad's chief of staff when he was vice chief of um staff i think i'm pretty sure i'm almost positive so it really is like all linked together and i met my best friend because she told me that her dad was also in the military so we bonded over that so i feel like there really is a very close link in between everybody who's in the military, like whether you're a child or whether you're serving. You know, uh, Caitlin, you said something really interesting now. You just said it really kind of depends on where you were. Were mm -hmm. there particular um, areas that you guys have moved to where you felt a bigger sense of that military community versus where you felt more separated? Let's go to Matt first. I see I'm nodding his head. Yeah, like when you're in Gage Town, um, like it's it's definitely a smaller place and so like um and you you're connected there because the military community and, and frederick frederick is not a huge town by any means the imagination and like gauge town or Mokdo even more so um and so there, there you have that connection whereas you're in kingston it's a couple hundred thousand plus um i lived on the opposite end of the town from where like the base was like you i didn't there was like maybe a handful of people there in the military that went to our high school, right? Mm -hmm. Comparatively to a place like Rome Octor, it's, it's, it's all over the place, so. That's interesting. What about you, Rai? I, I, exactly what Matthew said, honestly. Um, Were there particular uh, areas, you've moved so many times, are there particular areas that stood out as more about that military community? I would say, honestly, yeah, like Gagetown and Winnipeg are definitely, like New Brunswick and Winnipeg are, uh, are two very predominant places that, that had that feel. Um, an interesting thing though too was like living from the difference between Canada and the USA, uh, whereas like in Colorado Springs, you did have a lot of international people, international military families um, and members uh, serving on the base, uh, multiple bases, but in the Springs. And that also, even if you're from a different country, that definitely is a, a molding technique as well. Like uh, I remember meeting people down the street in the neighborhood where I lived on the base in uh, Colorado and that's just kind of how you get along. You have that one common interest and then you kind of evolve from there and you kind of leave that in the back because everyone knows where you're from in a sense, but um, you just kind of organically evolve in that way. So it's, it's definitely a great foundational layer if you can bump into some people that are also like a military background. So I'm curious to know, because I think Matt, you were in Colorado Springs as well, right? Me? No. I, uh... Oh, no, you weren't. Okay, Caitlin was in Colorado Springs. Do you remember Colorado Springs, Caitlin? Were you old enough? I wasn't in there. No. You weren't there? I thought you were. No, where were you? You were in Oklahoma. I was in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Okay. So I'm curious from, from the Oklahoma perspective, and, and were you in the States at all? That you, you, um, we lived in Montgomery, Alabama for about a year. Okay. Um, and I'd say probably around like Cold Lake, which was the one right before, is when I started really remembering things. So I remember most of our time when we lived in the U.S. 
I'm curious to know um, now that you, uh, Matt, were you in the U.S. at all, or you just weren't in Oklahoma Springs? I never got posted. Right. So I'm curious from from the three of you. I'm curious to know from a military family perspective, did you find a difference in how you are recognized, treated, or your experience was um, in the states versus Canada, and and what that looked like? Was there was there a recognizable difference? I mean, there's definitely the uh, I say just a a general overarching cultural difference between a lot of Canadians who grew up in Canada versus Americans from America, obviously. Um, but in that, once you kind of mention the word military in the States, um, everyone's kind of under the same umbrella. Like it, it's a very military supportive country. Right. Um, so when you are there, it, there's not too much of a difference, but uh, there was always the question, I mean, in terms of like geography or history of Canada, telling a lot of Americans, um, a lot of funny questions. Like if I live in an igloo or <laughs> I had a pet polar bear or a beaver, um, a lot of those weird kind of instances, but uh, it you, was always- You get to play along, like, oh yeah, I got my dog sled up oh, all the time. There's a point you become an expert, like you you map it out, you name your polar bear, and oh yeah. <laughs> nice, that's awesome. Uh, em, did you, you said you remembered your time in the States, did, did that feel yeah. different to you? So when we lived in Alabama, I was three turning four, so I remember I was- really only noticing the difference in the kids from the United States because right before that was when I lived in Cold Lake which was in Alberta and I remember quite a bit from there with the kids and stuff but I also remember um, in the U.S. as a kid you don't notice any of the changes so I never noticed any of the differences between the kids and the adults that from the U.S. compared to Canada, right. but after I moved here and like I got older and stuff, I realized that there wasn't much of a difference, but there was just enough to know that you weren't from there. And obviously, what does that mean? Tell us what that means. So it was kind of um, like Ryan said, there was like the igloo questions, and because they were so young and we were all so young, I was so proud to say that I had moved so many times and that I had lived in these different places. And all of the kids would then kind of like catch on to that and be like, oh, she's like she's had all of these experiences and been everywhere. I want to ask her all about that. So it kind of became like almost like a title that you would have wherever you would live, or at least I did when I was younger, because I was so proud of it that I would have this title of being like the military kid or the <laughs> kid who traveled. And I always had a sense of pride for that. And it, it did change a bit when I came up to back up to Canada when I started meeting other kids from military families, but I would say that um, the differences weren't necessarily negative. They were just differences. That's all they were. Right. So I have a few questions coming in from people who are watching. Uh, one that, that makes a lot of sense. What was it like? Uh, I'll, I'll throw it out there and maybe we'll put a Caitlin first. What was it like going to constantly changing schools, like going from school to school? What, uh, what's that experience like? Caitlin? I don't know if she can hear me. Caitlin? I don't know. Okay, well, I, I will, maybe there, there's a possible problem with her internet. We'll go over to Ryan. I'm gonna send uh, Caitlin's mom a message. Um, yeah, so I mean, Ryan, I went me to, I, I went to three different high schools um, growing up. So, I mean, I entered uh, in grade nine, I guess, starting high school. And then I went to Winnipeg, that, grade nine was in Ottawa. Uh, then I went to Winnipeg for grade 10 and then Colorado for 11 and 12. So it's a big mix. I mean, I think I, I honestly was just lucky in a sense, I think as well that I just maybe predisposed or just because of my upbringing, I didn't know anything better. I, I accept moving relatively easily. Did you? Um, okay. Yeah. However, uh, obviously there, there's always the, the push and pull. I mean, you always have to kind of make new friends and when you're going to a different country or a different province where you don't know anyone. So it's always tough, but um, I guess in a sense too, like I, I played a lot of sports growing up. So I always had that, that one variable that always kind of had my back as well, which really made like, like switching from school's experience, um, I guess bearable, you could say for someone who's formative in those years. Okay. I have a question about sports, but we'll come back to that because I think that's a really, that's, that's something that's, um, I want to talk about. Um, Matt, what about you moving school to school? What was that experience like for you? Um, yeah, so I got two things on that one. Um, so the first one on the friends, I think there's like a kind of like divided up on the friends and on the academic side. I think they're both, both important topics on this one. On the friend side, it's just, it's rough when you kind of, and this is kind of everyone knows this, but when you go into an area and 
everyone has these set groups of friends that they started kindergarten together, yeah. right? And and they've known each other for so long and just kind of having to get into that group of friends and then trying to make friends is, is a challenge. But I, I find it's something that I don't think I would have the success in my life if it wasn't for those those challenges. But mm-hmm. right? you have to you have to learn how to adapt the social skills that come with it, um, which is a huge bonus I find in, in my life. Just being able to go up and talk to people is something that you had to learn, right? And being in military family. And I think the second part on the academic front is challenging when you're moving between province and province or country to country as some of the other people on, the, on this call have done, right? Like not not Every education gets going to get the same, and that's challenging when you're moving from one school board that has X percentile that is teaching at this English rate, and another school board that's teaching at a different one or a lesser. Sometimes you're moving one once every one or two years, and sometimes mm-hmm. you're going to play catch up because you're moving between it. And while you're advanced in one area, you're not, and that, that's challenging for kids. And it was challenging for myself, especially. Mm-hmm. So that's those are the kind of the two aspects that I, I found between moving a lot. And what about you? What was it like moving school to school? So I didn't really jump into school until I lived um, in the U.S., which we went to, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember if it was a private school or a Catholic school, but I did not like to wear the uniforms, so that was the one part that I didn't like about it. But because you're so young, people hadn't really found their groups yet at that point, so I found it really easy to jump into that. And when we moved back up here to Ottawa, um, that's when I started to see the challenges because we moved in the summer, so I was able to make friends with the kids on the street. And I ended up going to Le Trois de l'Est, which is the school that my best friend used to go to. But because my brother and I didn't speak as much French, um, we couldn't go there for as long. So we ended up switching to Forest Valley. So halfway through my kindergarten, my senior kindergarten year, I ended up switching schools. Mm. That threw me off so much. But again, you're a kid, like you can make these friends so quickly. And I ended up meeting two of my friends that I've known for 11 years now in that kindergarten class in the second school. So like Matt said, it teaches you things that you never thought that you would need to learn. Like, I don't even know how many times I've had to walk up to random people and like make conversations um, to like get directions or all of these things. So it was a really great learning opportunity, but in the moment when I was young and we were moving, there was always like a bittersweet sense of, okay, I'm leaving these people that I finally made a connection with, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to go meet new people. So there was always a bittersweet moment about it, but it definitely teaches you a lot that you would learn a lot later in life. Hmm. Okay. Caitlin, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, good. I wasn't sure if we lost you there for a minute. So Caitlin, tell us, what has it been like for you having to switch school to school, especially since you moved countries and and what did that look like? Um, When we lived in the States, I didn't feel much of a difference because I was super young. But um, when I moved back up to Ottawa, I was in grade two at the time and I did find it a little harder, but not as hard because I was there until I was in grade six and then I graduated from Holy Spirit, which is in Pittsville. And then I moved to Toronto. So it was like an elementary school to middle school. And then um, when we moved to Belleville, it was back to an elementary school. So it was kind of really different to move from middle school back to elementary. Were there, were there positives or negatives that came from that that you can think of? Um, meeting all the new people there, there's, um, there's still people I still connect with and chat to all the time in Toronto and Ottawa. And so meeting so all the I have, I have a, a number of questions coming in, but before we, we go to these questions, I'm curious to know, because we have almost, you know, different generations here with, with Ryan and Matt and Caitlin and Emily, and I'm so curious to know, Ryan and Matt, do you think that your military life experience would have been a bit different if you had the technology that the kids have now in terms of being able to communicate with with friends? Yes. Uh, (laughs) Full stop and keep going. Yeah. Oh, there there are there are friends that I had um, growing up in in a couple of postings that I I I I don't even remember their names, Um, like best friends and stuff that we just lost touch because it was before really like social media or anything like that granted we were a bit younger but um yeah like yeah for sure it would have been different um would have been harder. I, uh, I don't know if it would have been helpful though that's the thing like it might have been a bit harder because you're kind of watching pictures and seeing videos and stuff like that of people who you had to leave behind so yeah it would have been different for sure mm-hmm. Ryan, what do you think no, I, I agree 100 percent with matt i mean um i like a few instances even like in i i 
basically in the middle of my, uh, I guess, military child upbringing experience is when tech really boomed up and I was on the social media train. However, uh, prior to that, like when in New Brunswick in grade one, two, so on, um, now later in life, I've actually reconnected with some people from that time, uh, which is kind of funny. And, and you kind of basically answer a lot of the same kind of questions, like how was your experience? And since we haven't chatted in what, 20 years or something, but um, I think for the most part, I, I was lucky. I, I, I was just on that cusp. So I caught on the train and went with it. But um, yeah, prior to that, like it's just reconnecting over time. You guys didn't have the AOL, AOL dial up internet like I had when I was growing up, <laughs> where if somebody picked up the phone, it completely changed your connection. Um, I have a question here. This Let's say it says it's a two part question. The first part of this question is what is what is or was um, the best part about being um, a child within a military family? And uh, I'll let you guys pull straws and figure out who you want to go first on that one. Or we'll choose Ryan. <laughs> sure, I'll hop in. Uh, so the question was, what's, what's one of the best parts what's of the uh, best military? Parts? Yeah. The best parts is, uh, even Matt already alluded to this a little bit, is, um, and Emily did too, is just the fact that you're, you're a very diverse and somewhat well-rounded person, depending obviously on your experience, but you really can kind of chat to anybody. Like I remember it felt at one point in my youth kind of upbringing, I was chatting to more people in their 40s and 50s than my age at one point. And you start learning how to really create the small talk and and just evolve conversation out of nothing. Um, and that's been a great skill that I've used in schooling in my professional life. Um, it, it, it's invaluable, definitely. Like it, the path to get there is relatively hard because obviously it's a very different upbringing than kids who have been raised or, or anything in the same town. However, I would say that's the number one takeaway is just you become a well-rounded individual um, in a lot of ways. Um, I, I, before we I, oh. go to the next person, I just want to give a shout out. We have people coming in from Belleville, Kemptville, Keptville, Ottawa, Toronto, Thornhill, Winnipeg, um, and Woodstock, New Brunswick. So thanks to everybody who's joining us right now. So let's go over to Emily. Emily, what's what's the best thing about being a military child, do you think? So like Ryan said, I really loved the person that it shaped me into, but I'd have to say my favorite part about growing up in the military, as unconventional as it is, it's the like history and like all of the different military stuff that my dad taught my brother and I. So he would teach us about like um, the Hercules planes that like he would, he used to load and he would teach us all about these like different parts of history and like the statues and the monuments that we have um, like in parliament, he would take us around and he would teach us all about it. And I didn't realize until I got a lot older that it was my favorite part about being in a military family. I have this person who has four history degrees who's teaching my brother and I about all of this. And it ended up getting me a 95 in history because I knew Perfect. all of that stuff. And it ended up leading into what I wanted to become as when I got older, like I want to become a teacher. And I think him teaching us all of that stuff and showing us all of these different experiences was one of the reasons why I've learned that. I love that. That's a great answer. Kaylin, what do you think? What, what's been the best part about being uh, a military kid so far? I think it's the different experiences from when we move and redecorating all the houses. I think that's my favorite part we do. We get to change up my room so many times. And you get to start fresh every time? Yeah. yeah. And then also the, resil the resiliency that it brings because um, you just develop it over time and you can adapt to new places super fast. That's, that's great. And Matt, what do you think? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with, 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 with all, all the comments, but uh, to build off what Ryan said, like mo moving a lot is a crucible, right? And being in, in the military family is a crucible sometimes, but it makes you stronger on the back end of it. Uh, it takes some reflection and it takes some hard times to get to that point where you kind of sit there and you realize, wow, like I wouldn't be able to do the things I did today if I didn't have that kind of force taught skill that it takes for, for moving all the time. And I think the, the second thing is just like you, you sit back and you kind of realize like how proud you are of, of your parents um, and what they what they did and, and just the little part that maybe you played like oh they couldn't have been at that that sporting event well because they were they were doing something really important and, and kind of having that self-reflection as a, as a military uh, family member right once again you, it usually takes a little bit of older to kind of until you get to that place you're like oh wow like well I was able to maybe help with what they were doing in that respect by, by maybe not being bad that night or kind of one of those things. But yeah, I think those are the, the two that I'd really so like. Before we go to the flip side of that question, um, I'm curious to know, you know, 
I'll, I'll give it to you first, Matt. You just said how proud you are of your parents. At what point in your childhood did you kind of really start to understand what it is that your dad was doing? Like fully appreciate it or yeah. like, under, like yeah, well, uh, I guess, I guess, I guess I, I'm sure that as you grew, as you became an adult, you appreciated it on a completely different level. So maybe what did that look like to you as a kid um, and your understanding of that as a kid and then reflecting back now, you know, did, did you, did, were you processing that in the same way that you process it now? Oh, just in case my dad watches it. Um, so the, the answer to this question is, I don't think I nearly appreciated as much when I was under 18. It probably took me until I was about 20 years old to really sit back and kind of appreciate like, wow, he was working 12 hours a day. Uh, uh, the reason why he didn't come home for a couple of days in September 11th, 2001 was X, right? The reason why he was doing that, why he um, was away in Haiti for that long on that mission was because he was doing X and you watch, see the videos and the pictures, you just didn't realize when, when you were even a teenager, kind of what he, what he was doing at that point. Um, and so you kind of sit back and you appreciate it a little bit later in life when you just spend a couple hours and start researching exactly where he was doing and what he was doing. And, and you start to get proud, right? And you realize, wow, like that, that is the best part of being a military kid is that you're watching your parents be able to achieve such amazing things. Hmm. Kaylin, what, how old were you um, when you started to kind of really get an idea of, of what it is that your dad does and what his work represents? I think almost a year ago. I think what 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 was it that kind of changed that for you I think it was just like it was the uh we did a whole thing in grade eight where you bring your kid to work day and I think after when you realize what they actually do and we went around the building and we tour around and then we went in the simulators but like it, your dad may have the coolest toys I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life by the way going into those simulators I'm like those are the best video games I've ever seen in my life yeah, I think that's when I realized of how like important his job is. Mm -hmm. And and M, how about you? When you know, especially you said that your dad was traveling up until a year ago. Your tra your dad was traveling constantly. Yeah. How do you how do you kind of process that as a kid and as a teenager? So I remember when I was a kid, um, it wasn't. It was kind of. It was it was routine. I would know that he's going to be gone for a while. And my mom would always say that it was for work. I'd say the time that I first really real, there were, there were two instances where I really realized that he was doing things that were important. So he was posted for, I want to say about three months. Um, I can't remember if it was in Libya or Italy, but he was gone and we didn't really realize how much he was doing at home and for work until he left. Because before he even landed, I had ended up cracking my head open on the wooden baseboard of my mom's bed. And I have a permanent scar there now. And I remember my mom calling my dad and her saying, like, I know this is so important, but can I just talk to you? So I think that's when I really started to realize how important her, um, my dad's job was, like, in how it worked with my family. That even though that happened and all of he's, he was gone for all of this time it was really important about what he was doing. And I think that's when I first realized it. And I got, and I, I got a, I got it back in my face a, a few years ago when I was on the phone after um, one of my Taekwondo classes for competing. And I had called him and I said, are you going to be coming to pick me up anytime soon? And he said, Emily, I am in Germany and it is four <laughs> o'clock in the morning. So another thing I didn't know he was in Germany because he had got called so fast for it. So it really like kind of puts into perspective what they were doing. And I think that's when I really realized that I was, I was that pride. I was super prideful about what he, they, he was doing with his life. Nice. And Ryan, what about you? Uh, how did you kind of yeah. process it all as a kid and now kind of reflecting back? How, how do so, you uh, yeah. I mean, as a kid, I, I did have it relatively easy because it was a aircraft. <laughs> um, so my dad was a helicopter pilot. And um, basically being able to like, like for example, at 403 in Gagetown, you would see all the Griffin helicopters lined up on the tarmac and going into the, the hangars. And I kind of grew up in that environment for, for a good chunk of my like, I guess, developmental years, um, like smelling that aviation gas. Like I still love that smell, it's amazing. But um, yeah, in, in the first, up, I guess, upbringing of my, my youth, uh, it was easy in that regard. But then when my dad kind of got more into the flying the desk job, it, it, it becomes a little more blurred lines um, for sure just because there are a lot of a lot of traveling days there's a lot of days of 
uh, what'd you do at work? And there's not really an answer there. It's just kind of like that nice political answer that, that they just can't tell you. Um, so, but at least, at least in this stage of myself right now, I'm just very, very, very proud and just honestly uh just something to live up to in a sense of what my uh, my dad was able to achieve like it's 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 not a small feat um when you realize what your parent was doing in the military when you once mm -hmm. you get to that stage like matt said mm -hmm. what um so the part two of the question that we had before coming in from uh one of our viewers is what what have you found what, what did you find or what are you finding one of the, like the most challenging part of being part of a military family or growing up as a military kid um Ryan, why don't we start with you? Cause you went last. Yeah, most challenging would probably be uh, all the unknown in a sense, like moving every year, every two years. Um, like I remember when we were in Winnipeg, we had six weeks notice or I think six weeks or two weeks, no two weeks notice, sorry, um, that we were moving to Colorado. Uh, so two weeks when you're grade 10 in high school, doing your thing, uh, making friends, uh, then you're off to a new country pretty much. That's, that's, that's quite the feat. So I guess like the, the relative unknowns um, is one of the harder things for sure. Um, then I'm on top of that is, I guess, yeah, I mean, honestly, that's probably my number one, just the unknown, uh, yeah, the roller coaster lifestyle that is the military. Caitlin, what about you? What's been the toughest challenge for you so far? I think it's the unknown too, but also I'm, I'm the oldest. So it's like keeping everyone together at the same time as keeping me together. So it's kind of challenging that way too. So you feel like you kind of have to set the tone for your brother and sister? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. It's like keeping their emotions intact too. Yeah, yeah, that's pressure. That's pressure on you right there. It's not, it's never easy being the older sibling to begin with, but when you're trying to be the older sibling, when there's so much change around you, that's gotta be really tough. Matt, what about you? What was the most challenging part for you? Yeah, uh, I, agree, I agree with Ryan. It's just unknown, right? Like I was in grade, I, did, I was super lucky that I was able to do my high school in, in one spot and every year it was like a lottery, right? Just like a bingo ball is just kind of rolling it. Like maybe we could pick the wrong ball and I'm, I'm off, right? And like, I was playing basketball at the time. I had a good, good group of friends that I kind of developed over a couple of years and it would have been heartbreaking to, to leave them. So it's that unknown of like, maybe I do have to leave, right? And so, um, yeah, I think that that was the most challenging part. And then, but also it goes back to the making new friends at a bunch of places. But like I said, it, it really helps build you in the long term. Mm -hmm. And uh, Em, what about you? What's been the most challenging piece for you? So just like they've all been saying, the unknown has always been a really difficult part because as they probably know, um, there's usually like a small switch in the jobs about every year or two. So there was always that like kind of backline anxiety that we're going to get posted again, like we're going to go somewhere else. And I had lived here for so long at that point, like this was the longest that anybody besides my dad had ever lived. My mother was in a military family. She was traveling. And it was always sad when I was younger, when we were moving, because like you're leaving this whole world behind, but there was always that sense of hope. So it's like, it's a double-edged sword. Like the, my best friend that I was talking about earlier, she was posted again two years ago. She's in Manitoba. I haven't seen her. So it's, it's sad with the moving. And mm -hmm. I'd say it's probably the hardest part is the initial move, but there's always the unknown that's like nerve wracking. Were there certain things, um, you know, I know as uh, we evolve and as the military is evolving and as, as uh, the environments that, you know, surrounding the, the military are evolving, they, they, there are be more resources being infused into families. Were there, whether it be the MFRCs, whether it be sports programs, whether it be, you know, clubs, were there certain things that made your military childhood experience that that little bit easier or if if there wasn't what would have made it easier for you um let's go to matt first oh um so uh we actually tended to live off base a lot of it for for from when i was growing up um proactive outreach it, it would have would be good and i think um sports is a big it's where i made all my friends uh playing basketball and playing sports and so knowing what uh, the clubs are, knowing what the, the leagues are, I think could be very helpful for families to just be aware of, of, of what the community is out there that your kids can, can pretty easily join. I find sports teams are a great place to, probably the best place to make friends, right? And so, um, yeah. Awesome. Em, what about you? What, what makes your experience a little bit easier? So I was really young when we were moving and I haven't, I didn't, never really was exposed to 
the different parts that the military would like um, sustain for you. Mm -hmm. So when we lived in Belgium, we lived on base, but I'm not sure if that's what we did for Cold Lake and Toronto and Alabama. But I know that there was always a sense that my friends were at school. I don't remember any of um, my friends before we lived in Canada, like in Ottawa, that lived on my street. I know that there was a girl who lived across the street from me in the US, but that's all I really knew. I only knew the friends that I would see at school. So probably something that would be helpful was um, like Matt said, have something where the kids know that there are others like them that they can be with and having an opportunity to meet them would be probably the best thing. Okay, I love that. Caitlin, what about you? Yeah, I agree with that. Like having something else to um, connect with other military kids. Cause I know that, um, especially around my area, there's not very many military kids my age. There's, they're relatively like my siblings age or younger, so. Does it, does it feel different when you do hang out with other military kids versus kids you might've just met at school? I think they understand more than what other kids my age would go through. Cause mm -hmm. most of them just stay in one place and they grow up. Like I know kids from my school that have gone through kindergarten all the way up to high school together. And right. I'm just moving around and just kind of finding my way in. So there's that kind of understanding of like, we kind of get it when you yeah. meet another military kid. And Bri, what, what is it that, what were the resources or, or things out there that made your experiencing experience just a little bit easier? Yeah, I mean, uh, like Matt said, and a few of us have alluded to, it is, uh, sports was a big one. I mean, growing up, I played a lot of hockey and a lot of, like, I got into running later on as well in high school. But um, for me, it's kind of also relates back to just the, the general understanding that when you are moving to this new place, uh, they often are kind of more so hotspots, I guess you could say. So even if you're meeting kids who aren't military related in any way, shape or form, they, they know that in the at least community, there's a general military presence. So uh, there's that for sure that you, you're not feeling too alien when you're in that circumstance, at least mm -hmm. for most parts. But um, yeah, for myself, I can really only say it was, it was hockey and sports, um, mm -hmm. like whether it's in high school, elementary school, um, like getting that little extra motivation to go try out for like the handball team or something random like that, just to uh, put yourself out there, um, which also kind of rolls back to the, the skill that being a military kid can kind of develop is being a little more out there sometimes and not being so like daunted to try new things. Mm -hmm. So I actually can't believe it. We're, we're, we're at 844. We're, we're just wrapping up here. That was a, a, an incredibly quick 45 minutes. But I think the last thing I'd like to ask all of you is, um, if you were speaking to the civilian population out there, which generally speaking, you are right now on Facebook Live, what is it, what is something that you wish the civilian population in general knew about what it was like to be a military kid? If you kind of had to sum it up and you're like, here's one thing I just wish people knew, what, what might that be? And Em, let's start with you. I think one of the main things that I would want them to know is how, how drastic of a difference there is in between the way that we all grew up compared to them. Cause I remember I used to talk to my friends about it and they would just be like, oh yeah, okay, you moved a few times. But once I met my best friend who had also moved there was that sense of somebody else knows what it's like. So having like the civilian population and everybody else who never really moved in their life understand how drastically different it was would have been something that I think they should all know about. That's awesome. Caitlin, what about you? What's something you'd like people to know? Um, I think that it, it takes a while for, sometimes it takes a while for other people to like move around to different places, but like, especially once you get older, it kind of like feels easier in a sense to like, I move around and move to another house or. So you feel, like, you feel like you adapt a lot quicker the older you get? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And Matt, uh, Ryan, let's go with you first. Yeah, I think uh, one thing, it's a big question for, for one, but uh, I guess one thing would be just uh, if, if they are seeing that new kid enter into the new town um, that they didn't grow up in, where obviously all their peers did, it's just, I guess, having that open, open-minded concept of, hey, come on in, like maybe throw out that extra like lending hand, you know, um, that was a big thing. And I had that in a few spots, uh, like Colorado for sure, um, where it was more of a community, a military community, but um, 
just knowing that these people are fresh, like mid high school, mid elementary school, um, having that definitely helps a lot. Yeah. Awesome. And Matt, close us out. What's the uh, one thing that you'd like uh, people to know about growing uh, up? I, I, I agree with everyone. Um, on, on Ryan's point, like it's, it makes a world of difference. If you, if your kid is around the same age and you say, Hey, can you should go reach out to the new kid around the corner? Um, that one friend, that anchor that they can just know that there is someone there in that community that they can go and reach out to, that they can go play street hockey with or, or whatever sport, or they can just hang out and talk about what, what school is going to look like coming up or kind of if they have other questions about what well, like different sports teams or, or whatever, like that one connection can mean a world to a kid moving to a new community. And, and on Emily's point, we're a little different. Right. We had to grow up faster. We had to keep, we move between places. We had to experience different places and, and meet new friends and all this kind of stuff. And, and because of that, uh, we're not always the most normal of human beings. At least that's I can speak for myself on that point. Right. And so it, it, it's just it's going to be kind of what the military kids are. But um, we've had to go through a lot um, and meet those those new friends and everything. And so it, we had a little different experience. But, yeah, reaching out and encouraging people to, to make new friends and and have the kids meet new friends, I think it would be the one thing I would tell the civilian population, quote unquote. I love it. Guys, this was tremendous. Um, thank you so much for being so open and honest um, and, uh, and and really just kind of putting yourselves out there. I really, really appreciate it. You offered some amazing perspectives tonight. Um, and I can't wait to have you guys back and, and do a part two of this because I think there's so much more that we need to be chatting about. So thanks so much. Uh, for those of you watching tonight, thank you very, very much. Stay tuned for two weeks from now. We're going to be speaking to spouses of um, the search and rescue group within the Air Force. So that's going to be a really interesting conversation. Um, in the meantime, I wish you all a very good evening and we'll see you all next time. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. Pleasure. Much.